I really like Wondershare Filmora for many reasons. The link to our review of the new version is in the description below and in the card above. But after posting that video, I received a comment from Denise Wilson. How do you use Face Off in Filmora 9? Now, I've used the power tools in the past, but found them to be useful in some things, and others were just a big question mark. And what in the world are they trying to do? In this video, we'll explore each of the filters that were power tools and advanced edit functions, how we currently use them, and how they can be used in our future videos. What used to be power tools and advanced edit in version eight are now found in the effects tab under filters utility. In some ways, these are way better than previous versions. Others, I've had to change the way I use them. As the category indicates, these are filters. So this will not so much change the clip, but the whole scene below the filter in the timeline, and only as long as the filter is applied to the timeline. Auto Enhance is a tool that does just what the name says. It's automatic and it enhances. This means that it uses preset values to enhance the clip. You can control the degree of effect, but no other controls are involved. It enhances all of the clips that it's above in the timeline. It adds contrast slightly and changes some other values, but that's it. Filters affect all clips and all filters below it in the timeline. So if you have multiple clips showing as in a picture in picture or a green screen, it will affect all of it, anything that's below it in the timeline. This includes other auto enhance filters that may be below it in the timeline. This creates a border around the clip or clips below it in the timeline. This only affects the clips below it. So if you want the same border on all of the clips, just put it at the top. The border can be any color. It can even change color as it goes around the clip or clips. The direction box indicates where the color starts and ends for the scene. It could be that all the clips in the scene could have different colors, unless both start and end are the same color. The border can be blurred to give an effect. There's also control for the opacity of the border. With the combination of these two, you can have a dreamlike effect or fog surrounding your clips. Crop is a filter that will crop the whole scene that's below it in the timeline. You control the level of the crop from the left, from the right, top and bottom, this only controls the scene below it in the timeline. So clips above it will not be affected. The edges can be blurred, but this affects only the scene below the filter. The auto zoom will change the enlargement of the scene below the filter in the direction of the crop. And this can do some really strange things. It might be even interesting. It can stretch the scene in any direction, really changing reality. Face off is a filter that is so simple, it has only one option to it. What do you want to cover the face with? This filter is totally automatic just for face detection. As far as I can tell, it only detects human faces and only in a video clip, not in a static photograph. A human face can be a real person or a 3D model of a human face. If the subject is not facing the camera, the filter may fail to recognize it as a face. It wants to find two eyes apparently or glasses over eyes and a roughly face shape surrounding the eyes. Even then, it can miss this and not catch every face in the scene. So with that in mind, this wouldn't be a good tool to depend on to protect the privacy of some person in the scene. This is more of a comic tool to put fun faces on people. Image mask is a tool I've used a lot in the past to put a mask around a subject to focus on it while giving a colored background, sometimes with a filter in it to fill the space. This doesn't work the same as in the older versions. It's still useful, but not in the same way. The image mask operates on the scene and clips below it. It only gives a black mask to the scene. The controls are for positioning the mask on the scene and feather will blur the edges of the mask. It also has a switch to invert the mask, but that still only creates a black shape to the scene. Stay to the end of this video to see how I did a workaround for this to create a mask that does what I want it to do, what I used to do in version eight, and it even adds more. If you really want to protect the privacy of a subject, the tool to use is Mosaic. 
This tool has been improved from version 8 so much, I don't really don't think of face-off. It's just better controlled from Mosaic. When you put the Mosaic filter in the timeline, a single blur will show in the preview window. This can be shaped and rotated to the rectangular area needed. It's only rectangular. The type of Mosaic is also available with many types of blurs, along with the blur amount and opacity. This really is, a, is such a great improvement over version 8. The limit to Mosaic is that it doesn't move with the subject. But to work around this, just add more mosaics to the timeline that position in different spots. Then reposition each to cover an area as needed. A pan is hardest to do with this, but it is still possible to do it. So the people at Filmora, please, please give us a motion tracking or at least crop and zoom for mosaic. Shape mask is a variation of the image mask, but really only has one shape, a rectangle with large rounded corners. I really hope this gets better in future versions. Tilt shift with a circle is a filter that creates a circular blur warp effect on the scene for any clips below it in the timeline. The position and size of the blur is adjustable as well as the intensity of the blur. This will focus the eye of the viewer on the area in focus and still have the general shape of the scene intact around it. Tilt shift linear does the same thing as sh tilt shift circle, but it's a line as opposed to a circle. You can rotate that line and have anything within that area clear while the rest of it's blurred out. Filters in general can be used in an additive way. So anything under the effects category can be used additively to the scene below. So you can use multiple video tracks to build up a filtered effect that really is a combination of the filters. While Filmora 9 has made many improvements on older versions, there are things that didn't make it into version 9, well, at least yet. But with the improvements that we've received, we have other ways of doing them as workarounds. Here's what I used to do in version 8. I would use the advanced edit to build a mask border around a picture in picture clip. This would allow me to focus attention on the subject and still give a moving background to keep interest or to just simply to fill blank space. Mask no longer only affects picture in picture. It's a filter, so it works on all the clips below it. Unfortunately, it only has black as the mask background. This is boring and affects all clips below it in the timeline. This is how I'm able to do the same in version 9 and have more options to this function. Start by selecting the background colors and effects for the mask. Choose well, as this will not be easy to change, but it can be reused in multiple videos. Then choose a mask shape to use. Adjust it to fit the shape you want to mask, and you may need to select the invert mask button to leave the area you want open. Extend all of the clips and filters in the timeline well past the time needed for your specific mask effect. Then extend the mask a few seconds past the end of the rest of the clips. Then split that image mask at the end of the rest of the clips. Now simply add a solid color just below the mask at the end of the clips. Green is a good choice as in green screen. Then change the invert mask switch for the extended image mask. Now select the snapshot to create an image mask. This image file will be in the directory specified in file preferences. Go to that folder and find the file and rename it just so you can recognize what it is. And then go back into Filmora and delete it from the project. Now drag the file into the project and put it above the image mask in the timeline. This now matches the area of the mask. Delete the extended part of the timeline and now export the video at a resolution and frame rate to match your final video. The new mask file can now be used in your video by using the green screen on the new clip. In reality, this gives more control of the mask. You can actually move the mask around in the scene. So in a way, this improves the overall process and can be used in other ways. Plus, it gives you practice in using green screen if Filmora. So really, Filmora 9 is well worth the time to learn the new features. I'm also now looking at Filmora Pro to see if this is something I need to upgrade to. And in looking at it so far, it's got some really good tools that Filmora 9 is lacking at this time or may never even get. The learning curve for that software is very steep and takes commitment 
to learn in a short time. I'll let you know what I find in future videos. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.